Okay, so this is our continuity lab job. And what we're going to be doing here is building a faulty circuit that's going to be, I uh, think we had a short circuit in a wiring harness, and we had lots of damage to various wires in that harness. And so that's what we're going to be doing here is going through and building these faults into this circuit so that later on other students are going to have to come by and test the faults that you put into your circuit and see exactly um, you know what faults you put in where you put them in. So I do have the same colored wires that you guys all have but I'm not going to use these because I want all of your wiring circuits, I want all these faults to be different uh, than what I put into my wire harness. So I'm going to take a bunch of wires that are a different color than the ones you guys have. And you're going to follow along. And this is all kind of random. You get to choose what color wire you want each faulty circuit to have. So first step here, you're going to take all of your wires and you're going to strip the inst insulation off of them. Just off of one side, you're going to go maybe uh, between a quarter and a half inch in. This is 16 gauge wire. So on your wire stripper, you're going to find where it says that 16 on it. And you're go just going to take and remove the insulation right off the end of your wire there. And not off of both sides. You're going to leave one side with the insulation still on it and just strip off the other side. Let's go ahead and repeat that. Same little process there with all five wires. Now we have five wires here with the insulation that's been stripped off of one side. Now we're going to take and just grab onto the wire and twist it just like so. And now that's just going to make the wire a little bit easier to feed into our connector. So we have these, uh, these terminal connectors, they're called buck connectors. And we're going to be using our wire tool to then take and crimp these connectors onto the end of our wire. So we'll just feed the wire all the way in as far as it'll go into the buck connector. And then on the back side of your wire tool where it says crimp right here and it has a little blue dot, we're going to feed the wire into that little section there just like so. And now we're just gonna squeeze on this and crimp that wire, uh, that buck connector onto the end of our wire. And we're gonna repeat that process with all five wires. So once again, twisting on it, put it all the way into the buck connector Take and use the crimping side of the connector tool. And you should be able to pull on these. They shouldn't be able to come off. Uh, in your, your packets, in your, uh, your test kits, uh, there are a couple of extra buck connectors in case you, uh, you put one on and it's not crimped on all the way. And you'll be able to, to redo the job. So once again, just twisting. Insert the wire into the connector, take that crimping tool, crimp the connector onto place. And just repeat with all five wires. Insert or twist, insert, crimp.
Okay, and this is my last one. So be able to move on to the next step here. So now I've got five wires, all of them with a buck connector on the one side. Now I'm gonna choose one wire, doesn't matter which one. Yes, I know that you have different colored wires than I do. Just choose one, doesn't matter. We'll do uh, this nice gray one here. And we're just gonna set this aside. This wire's done. So in this wiring harness, we're gonna have, one of our wires is going to have uh, just fine resistance. It's gonna be a good wire that uh, uh, wasn't affected by the fire at all. We're gonna have another wire that's going to have an open circuit to it. It's uh, going to, it got caught up in the fire and it, it got cut in half and it's no longer making any connection. We'll have another wire that has a uh, high resistance in it so it didn't get cut in half, but it, uh, it got pretty crispy fried. And so it now has high resistance in it. And we'll, we'll simulate that by wiring in this little component here called a resistor. And we'll have two wires that got melted together and we'll have what's called a short circuit. And we'll talk more about all these different circuit faults um, in a little bit here. So I got all my wires with a butt connector on one end and I've taken one wire and just set it aside. That's gonna be my good wire that there's no problems with. Okay, next wire, I'm gonna choose another wire, doesn't matter which one. And I'm just gonna measure down this wire three inches from the end of the butt connector. So I got my butt connector right over here. I got my tape measure out. I'm gonna measure down three inches on this wire. And I'm going to take the, um, the cutoff end on here and I'm just gonna cut that wire in half, three inches down. And that's it, I'm, I'm just gonna, that's gonna be my open circuit wire. So now that it's been cut, I'm gonna take and lay it aside. Next wire up, choose another one completely at random, doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to measure four inches down on this wire. Go down four inches. I'm gonna cut this in half, but this time, I'm gonna strip off the insulation on both halves of my cut. And we're gonna build now our wire with high resistance. So all these should have really low resistance to them. Copper wire flows electricity really, really well. And so what we're going to simulate here is high resistance, the um, resistance to the flow of electricity. And we do that with this little resistor here. So all we're gonna do is take that resistor and you guys uh, have, we have all different sizes of resistor in here. And so it's uh, impossible for me to say what the resistance on yours will be. Um, we're just gonna take and put that, uh, we took a, and stripped that wire off insert it into this little uninsulated butt connector. And now, just like we did when we were putting on those insulated butt connectors, we'll take and just squeeze my crimp tool on there. So now we got it on one half. We'll repeat on the other side, insert the wire. And now we've got our high resistance wire. So if you recall, got one wire that's just fine. Nothing wrong with this at all. We got one wire with high resistance. We got one wire with an open circuit. That takes us to our last set of wires. 
these two wires, we're gonna measure down five inches and cut in half. Now I'm gonna take and actually remove about an inch of the insulation off these. I wanna remove a bunch of insulation off this. So we'll take, put in there and take off. So now a bunch of our wire is showing right there. And I'm gonna repeat that. So this is one half of our brown wire. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side of this brown wire here. Now I've got the insulation showing for both of those. I'm gonna do the same thing with the orange wire. Take and put it in with that number 16, about an inch or so down. Remove that insulation from both sides of where we cut it. Now, I need to take all four ends that we have removed the insulation from. I'm gonna hold them all together, just like that. And now I'm just going to take and twist all four of these together. And this is our short circuit. This is where our wiring harness is melted through. And now there's a path for electricity in between wires that should be insulated from one another. They shouldn't be showing continuity from one side to the other. Now I can fold these up here and we'll see that we got, so we'll just kind of fold these up and take this end this little pigtail that's on there and just kind of fold it over and now we got our wire ends our uh, our butt connectors on one side just regular wire on the other side and now we got a setup where we have a, a short circuit so this would be like my example here would be like if uh in this wiring harness maybe the horn and the headlights were on the same circuit and now all of a sudden after this electrical fire that we've had, I go to you know, turn on my headlights and the horn starts honking and won't stop honking until the headlights get turned off. You know, something nice and annoying like that. That's what we've simulated by running these wires together like this. So next we need to put a little tape over this. Just wanna keep these from touching any other wiring segments so not a lot of tape we don't want to wrap this up really thick because the conduit that this is going to go into this piece of conduit here it's a pretty small diameter hole and so we don't want it to get too thick with tape so that it can't slide through so just go through a little bit of tape on there And now we got those two wires done up. And then there's also obviously bare metal components here. So let's go ahead and tape over that as well. Just so that we don't get any undesigned electrical faults in our system. It's okay to have electrical faults. That's what we're here to build. But we don't want any electrical faults that are coming up in there that we didn't intend to put in. Okay. So now we've got all of our pieces of wire here with our butt connectors on them. And I'm just laying them all one on top of another. And now I'm going to tape them all together about two inches down. So let's go ahead and measure 
down from the butt connectors two inches. And now that's where I'm going to go through and tape all these together. So now they're taped together like that. And I need to lay down the other end of my purple wire. It's not really connected to anything. So I got to lay it down in line with all the other wires. And I'll just wrap a little bit of tape around. Just kind of go in the middle here and tape that into place so that nobody's going to be able to tell that one of these wires has been cut in half. The only way you'll be able to tell is by testing it with an ohm meter. Okay. Now this is looking pretty good the way that we want it to. Next, I'm going to take and put the wires into this tube now that I have all these electrical faults. So let's take a look at the electrical faults that we put in here. We have this one wire that has, and just everything's just fine. No problems with it at all. We have two wires that are shorted out to one another and we've got one wire with high resistance. Let's go ahead and put these into our piece of conduit here. So we've got all of them to slide through and into place. And where it gets out to the faults, it's gonna be a little bit tight to slide in there, but that's okay. And just make sure it goes in far enough to where you can see all of the pieces of wire out on the other side. Now next, I need to go to wherever my shortest wire is. So my orange wire here is my shortest one. I'm gonna trim all the others. So that now they're all at the same length. I want some of the wire to come out so that I can identify, I can see the color of wire that's on the other side. Um, so they need to stick out a, you know, about an inch or so on each side so that you can still see what colored wire you're dealing with when you go through and start doing your electrical testing. And now I'm just going to go through and strip the insulation off of each end, just like we did in our first step. Okay, now that we got all the ends stripped off here, same thing as last time, do a little twist, insert your butt connector, go through and crimp on your butt connector. Twist, insert, and crimp. Just keep on repeating that process.
And there you have it. Now we have a set of electrical faults built into a wiring harness. And now we can, later on, we're gonna trade these around and we're gonna see who's able to do the best job of fooling the other students with all the electrical faults that they put into their wiring harness. Okay.